Okay, so let's do a quick example of computing centralization. I have a network here. The nodes are colored and sized by their closeness centrality, which you can see over here that I did. Um, so node F is obviously the most central. It's laid out in the middle, plus we can see that it's the biggest and the darkest green one. And if we switch over to the data laboratory in Gephi, I've sorted these by the closeness centrality. And so F is indeed our most central node. And the first thing that we want to do to compute centralization is to find the difference between F, its centrality measure, and each of the other nodes and add that together. So we would do 0.667 minus 0.6. That's going to give us the difference for our node B. Then for A, we would do 0.6 minus 0.5 and so on and for all of these and then we add those up and that gives us the numerator for computing centrality. Once we have that computed, the next thing we have to do is figure out the theoretical maximum centrality that you would have for a network of this size, so a network with this many nodes. And in most cases that ends up being a star network, so I'm going to pull one of those up in Gephi. Okay, so here it is. Same thing that we did before, I've just changed it, so now F is connected to every other node. This network actually has the same number of nodes and edges. And you can see that F is very central. You can't really get more centralized than this, where one node is really clearly in the center of the network. If we come back to the data laboratory and look at the nodes and sort them by closeness centrality, you can see that F has a centrality of 1, and every other node has a centrality of 0.54545. So what we would do is add up 1 minus 0.545 for each of these. So we would do that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times, and that gives us our denominator. Then we take the numerator that we previously computed, divide it by the denominator, and that gives us the centralization.